It's weird yet natural that connotations get attached to words and ideas. For example, blue with ideas of sadness and emotion, soft with carbonation, and tuberculosis bringing thoughts of glamour and romance. Wait, what did I just say? Tuberculosis and glamour? Yes. Okay, so that sounds wild to us now, but in the 19th century, it was hot. It was in. So tuberculosis is caused by a bacteria called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. The Mycobacterium genus is over 150 million years old, and this specific species is about 20,000 years old. This bacterium has afflicted humans across history and across the world. We even found M. tuberculosis DNA when scientists did DNA sequencing on ancient Egyptian remains. TB can manifest with many different symptoms and affect many different parts of the body, and because of this has had a variety of names throughout history, including phthisis, which in Greek means decay, scrofula meaning breeding sow like a pig, king's evil, and consumption. The prognosis of the disease also varied widely, with some people succumbing to the disease within months and some within years. So let's talk about Victorian Europe, where TB was considered quite sexy. It symbolized feminine beauty and romantic passion. During this time, tuberculosis went by the name consumption. And everyone, okay, well, rich people, had this idea that it was an easy death with mild symptoms, including flushed cheeks, red lips, pale skin, and weight loss. Actually, throughout history, there are accounts of the disease as having symptoms that sound lovely. Lovely in comparison to cough, shortness of breath, and collapsed lung. So it's not just Victorian England, there are also first century writings describing TB as cheeks prominent and red, eyes hollow, brilliant and glistening, which based on that description, okay, a little twinkle in the eye, some nice blush, that's not too bad. Jumping forward to text from 1833, describing those with TB as clean fair skin, bright eyes, white teeth, delicate rosy complexion, thick lips. White teeth, okay, like I can see the other ones. Weight loss, rosy complexion, watery eyes. Those make sense if you're sick with a fever, but white teeth? Now granted, not everyone held this view, and thoughts about the etiology, prognosis, and sexiness of the disease varied by region. For example, in the early 19th century, the notion that TB was contagious was popular in Southern Europe, compared to the Northern European view that it was a hereditary disease, one that certain people, specifically beautiful people, were more susceptible to getting. Okay, also death in general was romanticized in Victorian times, and this could be because the death rate was high, as a way of dealing with the harsh reality. For some context, this was during the Industrial Revolution. People were flocking to the cities, and well, sanitation was not great. So if you're gonna die, you hope you'll look good dying. Spoiler alert, tuberculosis is not an easy death. In fact, it's absolutely terrible. But nonetheless, tuberculosis was used as a classic ending in literature for the beautiful main female character to die peacefully. So this disease became entwined with beauty and fashion ideals in Victorian Britain. So much so that you even have healthy people wanting to look like they have the disease. Toward the end of the 19th century, views on this disease were beginning to change. This was especially true in 1882 when Robert Koch isolated the bacterium and showed it to be the cause of the disease by injecting some of the bacterium into the rabbit and then the rabbit developed TB afterwards. This discovery, along with more realistic depictions of the disease in literature, made the disease a lot less trendy. So this once trendy disease became associated with the poor, sweatshops, and unsanitary conditions. And despite there being a vaccine and an antibiotic cure, still 1.2 million people died of it in 2018. So TB isn't just a disease of the past, it's still a serious problem. This just shows how easily people can misunderstand certain phenomena and how dangerous those misunderstandings can be. We can also investigate those beliefs scientifically. As time goes on, what seems mysterious or supernatural to us today may be explainable in the future. So whatever beliefs we hold now may just be temporary ideas in time that can change and evolve. Some may persist for longer than others, but ideas and views are hardly ever permanent and they can be changed, just like our ideas of what's considered sexy or not.